Welcome to the Art Studio Insights Podcast, where we demystify the creative process and exchange ideas with career-minded artists. We are your hosts, Adriana M.A. and Jackie Sanders. We are two emerging artists sharing for the advice and business lessons we have learned along our journey. So if you are not already, please go ahead and subscribe. This will help other creatives like you find our podcast and you will be notified when we launch a new episode every week. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about something not often talked about in the art world, but definitely an important topic I know to each of us, which is the idea of self-care as an artist. And I think the term self-care typically can come with some negative connotations or stereotypes as being this indulgent luxury, not a necessity in your life, just bath bombs and painting your nails and drinking wine and relaxing, which can be valid forms of self-care depending on what relaxes you and refuels your energy. But there are also tons of other types that are important, especially for your creative practice. Yeah, and part of the negative rep that it can have um, is that people think, oh, it has to be expensive. Uh, you know, for it to be worth it, you know, to invest the time in self care. Yeah, you know, it's gonna take several hours, several days. It's a retreat or a fancy spa. And the reality of it, it doesn't have to be all that. Um, when you think about it, and what is self care in the first place, we're just gonna throw it out there. It's a verb, right? It's the steps, yeah. the actions <laughs> that you take to preserve or improve your physical spiritual and mental health um and it's something that you need to take an active role in to protect your own well-being and happiness especially during stress- stressful times because nobody else can do this for you <laughs> like at all. yeah exactly and i think it's one of those things of the social conversation of just like putting yourself first and i think a lot of the time especially as creatives we try to always either like put our creative process first, or especially as business owners, put your business first, but really investing time and energy into self-care is not just important, but honestly a necessity when you think long-term, because we've all been in that place where we have a project where you have to do short-term sprints of work or maybe extended hours, but we all know that's not sustainable if you're not giving your body and mind and all those other parts of your life the proper rest that it deserves and proper pampering to an extent. So you really need to make sure you're protector, protecting and nurturing your body and mind because that is your instrument. As creatives, that is the tool that we need. If you just think of, okay, if you're a dancer, you need to fuel your body. You need to fill it with energy and movement. And if you break your leg, that's going to inhibit your dance career. It's almost the same thing with painting. You have to make sure you're keeping your instrument up to par. And then that's how you can make the beautiful work that you do. (laughs) Yeah. No, and you brought up a good example because it's not just, uh, you brought up dancers, athletes, artists. We're the same way. You can yeah. get injured, believe it or not. Um, even with something as straightforward as painting, you can have hand pain. And it's like if you don't do proper exercises for it or rest it enough, or your eyeballs. Uh, if you're a visual yeah. artist, you need your eyes. You need to rest your eyeballs. If you're like three inches away from the canvas because <laughs> you're trying to get this tiny little detail and you're hunched yeah. over and you have this bright light going and things like that, you're you're gonna hurt yourself and that's not worth it either. So it's also building in the time to say and listening to your body to say, okay, we have to, we have to take a pause. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Adriana, for you, what does self-care look like? Because like we mentioned, it looks different for everyone and what other people find relaxing and rejuvenating and filling your cup back up might not be the same thing that works for you. So for your creative practice, what do you find works? So I like to think of as my version of self-care being a lot about introspective and no surprises, creative expression. (laughs) Um, So for me, things like setting time aside to relax, ideally in a hammock with a book under the shade of a tree somewhere. Oh, that sounds so nice right now. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Campaign. The perfect temperature, not too hot, not too cold. (laughs) Oh yeah. And with a blanket in case it gets a little chilly. I mean, yes, 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 yes. Um, but (laughs) we can't always be camping out in the woods in a hammock (laughs) under a tree with a book and a blanket. So, and coffee and coffee. Um, (laughs) so when that's not possible, um, the alternative is to be able to at least sit somewhere near a window, looking out into nature, porch, back door, you know, um, um, 
back. I can't think of the word. What's the word? <laughs> uh, back deck. Thank you. Back deck. <laughs> Sorry, I just had that moment. Backyard. Backyard. Oh wow. You were okay. still thinking of the hammock. Still thinking. I of the apparently hammock. am still in hammock <laughs> mode. Yeah. So backyard, front porch, whatever that looks like. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that was fun. Um, <laughs> taking time to introspect. So this one's super important for me, taking that time to introspect or meditate on what I think actually matters. So it's those actions that could improve lives, even if it's just in tiny ways. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're not heart surgeons, so there is that. Um, <laughs> But small things, even if it's random acts of kindness or the things that you're creating through your work, things that can leave a positive and lasting impact and legacy long after we're gone. So I do yeah. take time to think about those things. I don't want to live my life in autopilot, which is very easy to do because that's how our brain's wired. Otherwise, too many decisions and we get stuck and don't do anything. Oh, <laughs> different conversation. But essentially having that time aside to just kind of it's even beyond casting the long-term vision. It's literally the, the past, the vision of the vision of the vision. But right. Anyways, so taking time for that. Um, everything water, to be honest. So swimming, just floating, <laughs> kayaking, <laughs> snorkeling, scuba diving. I mean, give me a lake, an ocean, a river. Yeah. In a bind, even the tub will do. <laughs> <laughs> but essentially being in water, there's something just so special about water. Um, Taking time to experiment with new materials or techniques with no pressure. So yeah. whether analog or digital sketchbooks are great for this. And we do have an upcoming episode to talk more about that. Um, and then lastly, I would say spending time with friends, um, family members too, where we can talk about the society we live in, the many facets of the quote unquote art world, because there isn't just one art world. There's many Yes. Different conversation for a different day, <laughs> a different episode, um, and other inte intellectually stimulating topics. And for me, I'm putting this one as an important part of self-care because I think it's really easy to just catch up with friends and how's life going and how are things going. And I mean, that's nice and it's social and it's great. But to me, it doesn't have the same impact as when you're yeah. like literally having this social conversation about equity and diversity and social justice. and yeah. Um, how do galleries, you know, what's the, the the part that still makes sense? What part is derived from the patriarchy? Like yeah. that kind of in-depth boom, boom, even though it's intense and not necessarily relaxing, but it's that intellectual stimulation that goes beyond the, how was the last episode of whatever insert show name? Right, like, exactly. I don't know. It's just a little different. How about you, Jackie? Yeah, that's very similar to me too, especially from the conversations aspect. And I think it's interesting hearing all the different things that you prioritize as self-care because a lot of them are just like what you said taking you out of that day-to-day -day routine and having structure and a routine if anyone knows me is very important to me <laughs> um but having those moments where you truly lose track of time where you truly are like that is something that i maybe even couldn't have even planned for and was more spontaneous just in the moment serendipity if you will of this is an amazing highlight in my day or week um, and I think those are really the things that obviously you can't plan for, but you can try to foster them as much as possible, which is always, always helpful. Um, and like you were saying, really having those deeper conversations, whether with a close group of friends or even learning about it myself, that's one thing that I'm trying to always be doing of like diving into a niche topic, whether a book or like a YouTube series of this is something that I know absolutely nothing about. Let's just explore it. It might not be reflected in the creative work that I'm making, but I am absolutely love being the beginner at something. I feel like that's the best way that I challenge myself because it lowers my expectations of like, I can't be good at this. I've never done it before. I can't know anything about this because I've never looked into it before. <laughs> so it's kind of, it almost stimulates that reminder of like wonder and curiosity that I think those traits are something that I try to always look for in my creative process. Um, so other things that I really love doing for my self-care and creative energy <laughs> is really focused around movement. Um, if people have been listening or they know me at all, they know that I'm a huge athlete. I always have been growing up playing basketball and volleyball and year-round tournaments. And it's still something that I really prioritize. 
um, in my day-to-day -day adult life. So doing pickup volleyball, doing volleyball leagues, basketball leagues, and really getting that time. One, it's off the screen, the inevitable screen <laughs> time, because you can't really get distracted with emails or social media or art admin tasks because you're literally in the sand. Your phone is still in the car. You can't be mindlessly scrolling because <laughs> it's 11 PM and you're playing volleyball under the lights. Like that is the best feeling ever. Plus it's healthy and you're working out and blasting music and dancing with friends. So like the best time ever. Um, and realizing that that is honestly an important part of my creative process because then I always go back into the studio after that. Again, it's something that's different from the day to day. It's community, it's collaboration with other people, but for the sense of movement and playing a sport. Um, so in addition to organized sports, I also love just fueling my body in general. I love cooking and trying new recipes. I think that's another form of creativity um, that I want to hopefully explore more in the new year, pushing myself out of the comfort zone um, in the kitchen, trying new vegetables, um, and just seeing what delicious recipes you can make, because then you can eat it after. And who doesn't love that indulging in good nutritious meal. Um, and then the final one that I really think about is kind of related to movement as well is going on hikes and getting out in nature, very similar to you, Adriana, mm -hmm. thinking about just what can I do during my week to schedule in getting out in nature, going on a hike, getting under the sun, even if it ends up being just spending 20 minutes sitting outside reading a book, or even if I do still have day job work or artwork, just can I do this outside? I think getting <laughs> the skin, the sun on your skin, your feet on the earth is really, really powerful. And I can definitely feel the difference when I'm like, I haven't spent a large chunk of time outside in like two weeks. No wonder my body's just like in robot admin mode because all I've been doing is looking at a computer screen and engaging with technology. Like your brain really follows the energy and the fuel that you give it. So if you're always doing computer technology stuff, I kind of start feeling like a robot sometimes. <laughs> so you kind of have to like break yourself out of that. I'm like, no, like I am human. I'm out in nature. I'm moving my body. I'm eating plants. I'm creating. And that's, I think what really helps with that creative and colorful energy. Yeah. And I love that looking at what we both mentioned, kind of reflecting on that for just a quick second. I love that being outdoors it seems to be one of the most impactful elements. I don't know what the magical connection is in there, so to speak, <laughs> but there's just something about, like you said, it's like breaking that routine or maybe making outdoors part of your routine, to put it that yeah. way, but breaking away from the mundane, busy, left brain, everything, and then just taking yourself outside for a little bit. I think that's just pure magic. But I also want to highlight what happens <laughs> if we don't take time for self-care. And Yeah, um, which we're all guilty of it. That happens time to time. Yeah. And I think that's why we know it's important to do self-care just from feeling the opposite effects of it, right? Like you only know how good something is once you don't have it anymore, or once you stop doing it, because you can definitely feel the effects of it. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah, um, I don't know if this is a, a, a two word situation or one word, depending how you want to spell it. We're just going to go with burnout, <laughs> burnout, burnout, yeah. burnout. It's like, the at least for me. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like almost the equivalent of being hangry, but way more and compassionate. Oh, yeah. You know That's how, a good like, comparison. Yeah, you know how when you're like getting hangry, for those of you that may not know, hungry and angry. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> you feel it coming on. It's like a slow burn, but oh, and it just builds up. And then it gets to a point where that snowball gets gigantic. I feel like yeah. not doing self care can have that kind of effect because then you're working towards an exhibition, you're working towards this project, kind of like you were talking about earlier. You're just going 500 miles an hour. Sometimes, I'm going to be honest, sometimes a lot of it is self imposed. Sometimes there's a little bit of ego that gets in the way of, I can do this. And it's like, 100%. <laughs> like it's not that you can't, is that do you have to go that speed? Maybe you don't. Right. Um, it's kind of like this society driven productivity mindset, which we love productivity. Don't get us wrong. Right. The but sometimes, culture. yeah, almost like that extra unnecessary pressure and we'll do it to ourselves too. It's yeah. like, I can meet this deadline. No, I'm going to beat this <laughs> deadline by like two weeks. And we don't, 
we don't really have to. I am the queen of that. It's Uh so bad. (laughs) Uh And then if you don't schedule into it, bits and bobs for self-care, like little bits of time. And I'm guilty of that. Like you said, we're all guilty of this sometimes. This is not a shoulda, coulda, woulda. This is more of a acknowledge where you're at and then make a plan to improve from there. Um, Mm -hmm. But I feel like if I don't schedule time off, literally like to not do anything just watch tv just go outside go read a book go sit in a hammock kind of situation then all this like pressure builds up all this stress builds up it's like a pressure cooker and (laughs) i mean instead of like (laughs) instead of a slow release it's just like bam burnout here we go um so at least for me what i've started to do is like i you know obviously the more burnouts you go through as long as you're kind of keeping an eye on them, the better I think you get about detecting when there's one coming on. Yeah. There's a difference between being tired, which is fine. We all go through that and feeling the burn coming. So for me, it's like, okay, if I start feeling the signs of it, you know, uh, like maybe I'm losing some motivation. Maybe I'm just like, you know, not sleeping enough. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, there can be many ways it can manifest itself. Creativity is kind of getting a little blocked or whatever. Then that's when I'm like, okay, go down the list of the different (laughs) self-care things like we discussed and then just pick one. And it can be, even if it's a walk in downtown Raleigh, which is near where our studios is, to go to a park a couple blocks away and then come back into the studio. Oh, huge difference. It makes a huge difference. And that can only take, what, 10 minutes? Like it's, yeah. it's not that much. Yeah, exactly. And that's one thing like I know we talk about all the time and on the podcast, like those understanding for yourself, what are those signs of feeling crispy? Like you're about to burn out. And I think then the power comes with not just being able to recognize the signs, but then be proactive to like cool down the oven, so to speak, <laughs> like turn down the temperature so that you don't get burned. Because yeah, I think it's one of those things where if you push it too far, the backlash can be so hard to come from. You have to be like a full reset and mm-hmm. having these, like these self-care things in your tool belt can be so empowering. And I think the biggest thing for me, especially when trying to evaluate, like you were saying, there are moments of being temporarily tired, like in just any one given day, like, oh, I didn't sleep well last night. I had a long to-do list today. I'm just physically tired. One good night of sleep and I'll be good to go. That's very different than like most, emotionally and mentally drained Mm -hmm. to where you wake up feeling fatigued. That's a totally different thing. Like you have to invest time back into yourself to build that up because yeah, every small task that normally would be no problem then feels like this big weight. And I think the biggest thing that's helped me is like you mentioned earlier is being able to ask myself, okay, what is my motivation for pushing for this big goal or pushing for this deadline that I probably imposed on myself or this expectation (laughs) of like, I'm doing something crazy since we do business marketing. Okay. I have to make 10 TikTok videos a day, exaggerating. I do not do that, but like, okay, if that's the goal I set for myself and I just feel drained, maybe I headed a few days and then I just feel totally fatigued, but I'm like, no, I have to do this well, I don't actually have to, what's the larger thing I'm actually trying to accomplish. And the thing I always tell myself is don't be a bad boss to yourself. (laughs) Like if you were in these work conditions as business owners, and if let's say you were working for someone else and they said, Nope, I don't care that you only got three hours of sleep last night. You've already worked for 10 hours today and you haven't eaten in six hours. You better stay and make these three TikToks (laughs) until they're done. I'd be like, excuse me. Here's no my notice. Ma'am. Yeah, here we go. Here's walking out the door right now. Like, <laughs> and just think of that and trying to like remove yourself of making sure that you're treating yourself and your body like you would want to be treated because you are your best asset in the business. You have to like take care of yourself and really continuously evaluate, okay, what is my larger purpose for pushing for this goal? Is this necessary of a push or can I take a day off and rest and then come back into the studio. And sometimes if you verbally or in a contract committed to a certain deadline, sometimes you do have to push through it. But I think being able to recognize, okay, what are actual hard deadlines versus just your own expectations can really help avoid when you are feeling that crispiness from going to a total burnout. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you mentioned contracts because sometimes, I mean... (laughs) 
some clients, I mean, they're human too. They're going to understand if it really, really, really comes down to it. Yeah. What's the worst that can happen? They say no to you moving a deadline. Okay, fine. You push through it. But if you really are feeling at that, at that, <laughs> the edge of that cliff, go ahead and ask, Hey, you know, there's a lot of things going on, et cetera. I'm wondering if we can move this a week or two weeks or whatever it right. is that you need. So also don't be afraid to ask, you know, and not just for them. Sometimes you need to ask your family. Sometimes you need to ask your friends, your spouse. I need right. time right. away from y'all um, <laughs> or right. with y'all, whatever the case might be. So also yeah. I would say like in, in that line, don't be afraid to ask for help, you know, and, right. say, and I hey, think how do you do it? And, you know, I need to schedule the time off. Right. I think building that into your own expectations and contracts from the beginning is super helpful. That's one thing that I almost get hyper focused on growing up as an athlete. There was always that mindset of like, if you're on time to practice, you're late. If you're five <laughs> minutes early, you're on time. And so I was like, okay, well, if you're five minutes early, you're on time, but I want to be early. So I'm going to be 15 minutes early to being early. And then all of a sudden you wind up getting places 30 minutes early all the time. Like, that's just how my brain works of like, okay, I want to be the overachiever. I'm going to be early for being early for being early. And it's just a vicious cycle. But when it comes to business, I find that is super helpful of being just so proactive and building in those buffers. So like, let's say, for example, you get a solo exhibition that you want to hang, that you have scheduled to hang July 1st. Okay, well, realistically, you'll want to try to maybe get all of the artwork done by the end of April, because then you have May, June to put hard, hardwire on, photograph, list it, all these other things, and accounting for what happens if you get the flu for two weeks and you are just on your butt out of it? You can't say that of, oh, well, you can't have the solo exhibition. It's not <laughs> done. Like buffering in that time and then worse or worst or best, I guess, depending on how you think of it. Okay, you've absolutely finished everything by the end of May and you have all of June to maybe make a whole nother piece that's your best and favorite piece ever, but there's not the pressure of like, this has to be done in order for me to hang this exhibition tomorrow. Like, I feel like the way I think is just actively avoiding that situation at all costs, because I have been in that situation and I hate that feeling, especially from a creative energy standpoint. So building that into your own expectations and contracts can be super helpful because then, yeah, if something happens, if, especially these days with COVID going on or just, you know, normal sicknesses that make you like not be able to make work or create or do whatever, it's already built in. So you don't have then the added guilt of, okay, I'm sick and I should be doing stuff, but I'm not doing stuff because I'm sick, but I have this deadline. You already know at least that's taken care of and you can just focus on getting better. <laughs> yeah. And if you find that you're bad about taking time off, schedule it. Put it yeah. on your Google calendar, put it yeah. on the calendar on the fridge where your family can see it, whatever that looks like for you. If it comes down to it, schedule it. I mean, at least yeah. one full day a week or split up half days throughout the week, whatever right. that looks yeah. like based on whether you have other jobs and kids and whatever that, um, you know, however that's structured for you. But definitely, definitely make sure that no matter what you take some time off, uh, time to basically like renew your own energies other than yeah. sleeping, which is of course extremely important, but <laughs> in these other ways that we discussed and yeah, refill yeah. that well. I think that's one thing too, that's helpful for me in terms of like, especially with movement being such a big part of it is like, even if you have to actually commit to something that forces you to do that self-care, like I absolutely love playing volleyball. So joining like two leagues a week where it's like, I'm committing to this team on Tuesdays and Thursday nights, we're like, I have to show up. So maybe if it is like you join like a nature hiking group, maybe you do have a commitment, a standing commitment with family and friends. Okay. Every Sunday morning, we're going to do this. So then it becomes almost an event and we're huge about time management and having trackers for your art business. But that can also be something that you as a business owner track because it does affect your business to where, okay, maybe I put in the number of hours in the studio I wanted to this week, but I also want to schedule three hours of self-care time. 
And, oh, I've missed that the past three weeks. <laughs> no wonder this is how I'm feeling. So you can really understand those trends and get to know how much is too much time, how much is not enough time, so that you can really focus on sustainable business practice, which is what we love. <laughs> yeah, that, that's pretty much it. You said it perfectly. But with that, let's, uh, let's wrap up for today. We really hope you enjoyed this conversation about self-care. <laughs> exactly. And as always, both of our blogs will be linked in the show notes where you can find episode notes and links to all of our other podcast episodes. If you want to stay connected with us in between episodes, share what you have learned. Maybe you want to share some self-care routines or self-care yes. strategies that uh, that you implement. You can follow us on social media. I'm at Amay Art across all platforms. And I'm at Jay Sanders Studio across all platforms. Thank you so much for listening. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>